Welcome everyone to the second episode of my first look at um, the Manor Lords demo. Like they say, this is everything is still rough. A lot of stuff is not even accessible here. Um, can't even save the game. So um, take all that into account. But before we get started, I'm Gamer1745. I play a lot of historical and military strategy games and talk about the history around them. So if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. And everybody, I hope I earn your, um, you know, um, hitting the like button. Now, also, if you have any comments, questions, uh, suggestions, post them here. I am not that I have any special access, but I do um, interact once in a while with the devs on or the dev on um, Twitter, so I would pass along anything that you have to say about the game uh, to them. So, um, yeah, post below what um, you think. And um, just also, basically, this is to some degree how much I love what I'm seeing. Um, again, this is early days. I will be critical. I have been minor, minor little things going along, but I, I don't foresee me not liking this game it's just how much and well you, you can watch this and see if it's the game for you when it comes out okay new message because we're going to do a sort of tutorial okay your supplies are dry and secure the first stage of work is done uh, the stories your people will tell around the fire are of many dangers of the world from beasts to blights excuse me um strange tales about foxes who go on pillage and small creatures who spin gold from sunset to sunrise they tell these stories put common names to their fears soon they will teach these stories to their own children it is time to bring wives and children to the settlement now that they can make or they can take shelter in proper homes for your land to prosper and grow, you'll need not only workers, but families. Okay, construct a well, and to um, construct um, Burgage plot? I don't know, I, I'm not used to that term. I, I, I've taken classes in this period. Um, uh, I'm just not used to that term. We have a year to do this. Okay, so we need to construct a well now. Before we do that, what we're going to do is come out, um, uh, well, maybe it's regional map. No, not regional map. Okay. The only way I know how to get back is to hit um, the escape button, zoom in here. Uh, um, oh, overlays. There we are. That's it. So we have... What looks to me to be some sort of underground rivers, if I get this right, underground water. And I guess where the water table is below. So let's come in. Um, I mean, maybe no um, village life. There we go. Okay, let's see about putting the well. Um, I don't want to stick it on the side of a hill. I want it sort of close to where I'm planning on doing. We don't need to uproot too many trees here. There we go. Go shoot to standard sort of play again. I have been playing at this speed. I don't have a road there, so I don't... Are you going to go up over to there? I don't know. Let's see how this goes. But we are, if you didn't um, come before, we have a forager's hut. I mistakenly built a forester's hut first, but um, useful, but not yet uh, really useful. He um, is... Now stay with his drink. Just by carrying... Um, 
applies to the um, you know, transporting berries. Right now we've seen, again, this is, I want to stress it because I don't want to give a bad name to the game or the developers, um, you know, a demo, things are rough, they know it's going to get better, I'm sure, so I'm not being critical of things like that, but we have, just pointing them out, we have seen the guy from the granary carrying um, supplies over here, and you could tell that by the way he was walking, he looked like he was carrying a burden, but they weren't rendering in um, the um, the bread that he was carrying. So I presume later we would have baskets of blueberries or something being carried here. Okay, so now we have three blueberries as well as 11 bread. And um, up here, uh, food, okay, like we can see the different ones. Um, number of months before supplies run out. So um, three months for food and 18 months for fuel. So we've got plenty of fuel. Because if we only need to survive here a year or something, we've got enough fuel for the winter. At least at this consumption, comes consumption rate. I don't know if adding the families will increase more than just the workers, or if just more families will mean more. Um, each person conserves, conserves one unit of food, and a few one unit of, okay, so I guess with the families, maybe that would be more. Okay, so we could use another road up here, but this is taking longer, but oh well. I know we can remove roads. I don't know if they cost or what not. There's no hovel. Tomorrow, find a new home. Or town. Well, town may not take you in because... They don't want um, some villains around. Villains were basically, um, at least at the time of um, the Doomsday Book. So that would be what, 1080 or so? It was 1066 you have the conquest and it was like 20 years later or maybe it's, maybe it's around 1100. I don't know. Please don't hold me to these early medieval dates. Um, I mean, yeah, Hastings 1066, and no, I don't remember the, the month. Yeah. One. I mean, the card only carries two, so it carried two, and then the other one. Okay, so we have only one ox or bullock. Um, those I think are more or less interchangeable terms. An ox is a um, Trained beef, beeves, um, trained beef, beef, um, if you will, to do work. Uh, often um, gelded, so they're no longer, um, you know, bulls. As a, and I know everyone calls cows, well, cows are female. Bovines would be the m more technical term. Is there this sun or fire above? Okay. Okay, we've got our well. We've got our well. Now I'm gonna have to look up. Can't save anything, right? Oh no, no, I'm good. Okay, ah, let's see. Some buildings have flexible borders placed, four points to design an area. The cursor will snap the roads and other plots and try to create Oops, you can leave more space for the future extensions and upgrades. 
Okay. So let's. Okay, so we can have, I guess, the face of the house there. not what I want to do. Okay. No. Bring its turn. So what are we still constructing? Oh, well, maybe. Okay. Well, um, but we got the well constructed. to remove a worker from the granary here. Hopefully that doesn't harm our food, but... I am so glad I live in the age of plumbing and electricity. And I've come to live in the age of um, computers. Yeah, I know when I was born, you know, it was, you know, they had some of the big mainframe computer type things and whatnot. But I'm old, guys. We didn't have computers at, at homes when I was born, so... Um, the information or the data or the computer age is great too, but just electricity and um, uh, plumbing is is a wonderful period to live in. So I've done a little reenacting of 18th century stuff, which is more than just cosplay and dressing up in, in old style clothing. Um, but You could call it Eric's experimental archaeology as well, I would say. And I'm fascinated by other time periods, and I know there's a lot of people, and like because I have done in the um, you know, living history things, that people, oh, I wish I could have lived back then and whatnot. And yeah, there's a lot of exciting and interesting and challenging and wouldn't it be cool to live in the previous time I, I do really get that I'm not minimizing the, the some elements of attraction to it um, but yeah electricity and Indoor plumbing.
I gotta look up what Burgaga Burgagi 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 pot. Never heard of that before. I don't know if it's more of a European term and most of my you know medieval studies type courses were focused on you know the English experience so uh, or maybe that was a uh, term used in England as well and I just never heard it or slept through that part of class or something I don't know Because, okay, since we don't have anybody working in the pantry, we still have, we have our food there, but we have, um, food, you know, um, stockpiling up. Now, we can hold up to 50 storage in the forager set, so hopefully that's secure storage. And we have this guy who's moving around, I don't think, um, the ox, our ox. Either using them to, you know, move in logs from where they've been, you know, felled and, you know, I don't know if dressed is the right term, but, um, getting rid of the extra branches and whatnot and getting them into there and either moving them then to the storehouse. We don't have anybody working in the storehouse, so I'm not quite sure how that all goes, but. Yes, to me, the graphics graphics are just stunning. Hey, workers, that's fine. We're getting along. Keep timber being felled and dressed and whatnot, and I want to keep food coming in. We can move it to the pantry later on once I may need to go to the um, granary, I should say, to be able to be distributable as food for the populace. But that's continuing to come in. Months, okay, we're still at three months, so and we're still in just May. You guys are cranking through this stuff pretty fast, I suppose. Hopefully this guy will start bringing wood to this plot now that we are mostly done here. Instead of hauling wood over here from the um, logging camp. That yeah, looks like it. Good. Now, in a way, in a way, this is an extraordinary thing happening for 
the period. You really, really rarely would have um, something like a, a completely new settlement being set up like this. Um, this is more of a game um, mechanic in that you're starting with nothing or nearly nothing and building up. This is something that did happen with colonization, you know, here in America, because, yes, it's the Renaissance, but this is the type of thing of the early American, North American settlements would have been doing, you know, showing up with tools and food on ships and building settlements. This is not a thing that... Um, uh, would have been done in any sort of common situation. I'm not saying in a never situation, I'm saying it's not, it's very rare. I remember one archaeologist talking about if he could travel back in time for just a day, because he, like me, who loved the past and studied it all the time, um, and was a professor and whatnot, um, of archaeology, but you, know, you got another past. Oh, it's raining. Well, good thing we got our food inside. That's good. Um, oh, we're in June already. Okay. Um, was, you know, for a day, and he's glad, I, you know, the, the idea was for a day because he would want to go back. Okay. Watch out for supplies. Peasants are coming to your village. This is a great, but watch out for your supplies. Hungry and cold peasants can rebel. Got it. Um... Was the day, um, you know, particular day that sort of recorded back in this time period in which they um, converted, if you will, um, living conditions in, I don't, know, I don't know, probably in the Middle Ages, but maybe it was in the Dark Ages or whatever, but from a um, dispersed landscape in that the idea of where, you know, you would live next to your plots of land, you know, so you'd have the house here and then you'd have your plot of land and then you'd have another house and plot of land, house, plot of land, to moving everybody to a village and that you would walk out to your plots of land. Because a lot of, and I, you know, we, we in the modern world, we're very, uh, we think very much of the idea that you would live on your farm, if you will where in the, the Middle Ages with their um, sort of system of um, farming and land usage, it would often be, oh, well, because we can um, uh, 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 oh, um, we can see here, you know, the Hills, hills and wild, and, but different um, different types of land around, and because they were community based, they you know sort of a fairness kind of situation. You would might have a strip of land that's on the side of the hill. You would maybe have a strip of bottom land over here, and then let's say the river over here, a strip of land over near the um, the river or something like that. So you would have these three plots of land. So no one person, say, got stuck with the side of the hill that wasn't going to be very profitable. And the good sort of bottom land here, you know, that produced lots of grain. Okay, everybody got a share of that. And then over here by the river, yeah, it's, it's okay land, but maybe periodically it gets flooded out by the river or whatever it would be, is that they would um, sort of disperse out the land instead of in specific plots for a specific farm. That was um, at least one of the dominant ways of, of doing it. And there's still like a few places in England that still does it that way. They still every, either every year or every few years go out and re sort of survey the area to make sure that, you know, um, farm plots aren't, um, you know, migrating or expanding a little more for one or the other and 
So, and it's more of kept alive as a tradition. I think it's still profitable to farm, but um, I know it's not the most profitable way of doing it. So that sort of transition from um, and having everybody sort of dispersed living into moving into a little, you know, hamlet or village or whatever, um, changing the, the styles, and he would have liked to, to see that. And so that kind of thing. But that would be rare, and that's a one-time, not one time in a lifetime, a one-time thing, that they're moving from, you know, one style of farming and living into to another one. And once you you've done that, you don't keep doing it anymore. You, you know, expand, develop, um, and whatnot like that, for sure. Okay, well, it seems so far we're doing the three months thing just fine. They've got 12, because they, they just prefer blueberries over bread. And we have seven of them here. We don't yet, have, we haven't, because we, we've been building, we've been Focusing a bit more of our labor on building homes. Let's, okay. Need to keep up with. We're gonna do one more like this. There we go. Well, if that's square or whatnot, doesn't really matter, maybe. to find a good tree in soft ground. Yeah. You have a home for somebody here. I wonder who has it. Come along, lad. Fast sound either, that sounds cool. Okay, we've got two of these. Okay, so we have a thatched roof. Uh, house. They would probably have a fireplace in the center of the house. One of the reasons for the height of the roof, now I did talk earlier in the last episode about some of these roofs, looking at such a sharp, ste steep angle was a little bit more than what I would expect to see in England. Um, but that's about this. And notice this, the hole coming through here. Well, that's sort of functioning as your chimney. What the idea is that the fire, of course, generates smoke. The fire comes up into here and, um, does several things. One, it, it can, continues to dry out the thatch you know, from rain and snow getting on top of it. Um, periodically, you'd have to replace the thatch, but um, it would last for years. Um, and the um, the smoke would come up and drive away pests, um, whether it be um, you know mice or rats or whatever up in here or bugs or something like that. Um, drive that away and the the peak of it would be so that the smoke would linger down in um the living areas so it would come up to here 
and so they have a little bit of sort of rough planking on the side out here and the rest of this house I guess it has some sort of stone um, foundation which is I think sort of fancy it's, it's rubble built stone as it looks like meaning it's just um, it's not dressed so they just got stones maybe sort of develop some sort of flat sides put them down and then um, uh, but it's not dry stone work it's mortared together um, I don't see I guess that may be supposed to be the door up there and then we have some timber siding which to me is sort of fancy because um, timber like that is sort of expensive what I would expect it would be more like this here because it's timber framed as we see here but I would say that this is wattle and daub so this is a, a hurdle or um, you know fence type style, but this is also but made out of sort of wattle, meaning it and these would probably be a bit tighter than this um, here, in that it's a lot of sticks or big twigs or whatever you want to call this. You can see in here. Um, I don't see an obvious fireplace. I would say wood flooring is um, premium living here. That it, I would say most of the stuff in the Middle Ages would be compacted earth. Um, so that, that's fancy to me. And um, so they would build it like this here. Um, pack it a lot, uh, the branches a lot tighter and maybe a, maybe a bit thinner. Um, but weaved in and out with between verticals put that use that as the um, wall material and then use um, a mixture of straw mud and shit I think mainly um, uh, herbivore shit it doesn't smell like uh, predator shit meaning not human so much but animal um, you know like your, your oxen and um, mix that together and yes your hands would be in all, in and all over that kind of stuff and then you would um put it on you, know, you would you with your hands you would smear it into the walls to create the wall wall like that and then maybe they would whitewash the um the the external element of it okay so we're going to go here Let's see if we can. Pause. And maybe let's see about. Yeah, we can maybe do another right here. This one constructed first. I'll we'll need to get the ox over to bring over some lumber. Okay, so well, let's click on. Who is this? Okay, um, no. Gretland, um, task unassigned fetching water. These are definitely not Anglo enough names. We're German, I would say, which is not a problem, just commenting. Gotta go a ways for water, I know, but that was sort of the right over in here. One of the closest. Fairly shallow. That's pretty shallow. You only have to go down that far. 
Got a little bit of a counterbalance, so you just pull that down and it lets the water back up, so that's not. So it's a bit easier to pull something down and then it is to lift it up. Yeah, I should have had him moving the logs over there a little sooner. Okay, run out of supplies in two months. But what we're going to do here is let's see about adding another forager. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change that. Let's minus that down. Let's add somebody back over to the granary to move for food from. I see that there is a stockpile here of 12. Now, of course, we're getting more people in. And I don't know how uh, if the uh, sign fetching water. Okay. More populous. Let's see. Okay, we have a total population. Five peasant families. Looks like eight men and three women. Okay. Um, and maybe we'll see about also getting another one over here. Forage for things. Berries. Okay, priority number one. Yes, good. And let's see about adding Construction. Demolish building. Okay. Let's try this again. Most position. Okay, I don't think we're anywhere on too much of a hill. It's not giving me a house position. Um. Maybe here. Not too small. Okay, well, um, That's very cool in that it's oddly shaped, very sort of... Now, I don't think they had outhouses back then. I don't think, but I'm not sure. I don't ever remember seeing a an outhouse, meaning a toilet, out like that. But I could be one. food in. We've got now two people should be collecting food. Hmm. 
No, she shouldn't be idle. She should be grinding wheat or something. I don't know. We have three people currently working on construction there, or one fashion or another. Not the guy I think we would be. We don't yet have any markets for the trader. I presume once we, um, once they have the game beyond the demo version, they'll have goods stacked up there, maybe indicating what he's bringing into trade. But part of the idea is to say, um, if we've got iron in our area and, I don't know, um, clay or, or stone in somebody else's area, we could trade iron for clay or some such thing or whatever. Or like pots, maybe iron, you know, iron for pots, or maybe something made out of iron, like horseshoes or bullock shoes. Oh, they did shoe them. Uh, or some such thing like that. Yeah, this food thing is worrying me, but we are. Looks like bringing in more food. Well, we hadn't had 21 before, so we are getting more people. We have two people out here, and I do know we could build, but we'll see, you know, go after these wild animals. Now, you can join my Discord forum. You can find links to it around. And, um,. You either find opponents to, uh, or people to play alongside with. We play, they play a lot of um, Hearts of Iron, a lot of um, Crusader Kings or um, EU uh, from Paradox Games uh, and War Thunder and games like that. Um, but one thing we also do is have watch parties, movie nights, and um, as the time making this uh, video, the last movie we saw, we, it's on Friday night, um, European time, uh, was The Adventures of Robin Hood, the first color, maybe the first Robin Hood movie, I'm not sure, but starring Oli um, Olivia de Havilland as Maid Marian and Arrow Flynn as Robin, and obviously a very medieval-based um, movie. You may eventually look at other versions of Robin Hood that are worthy to look at, but um, now in that they make a lot out of killing a deer. Um, well, okay. Although these aren't fenced in like a lot of modern deer are than in hunting ranges, um, these are wild deer, and so. I would presume, uh, and it can vary in Germany, I guess, um, you can see again, regional map, this is, um, I would go New and Fort, New Fort, I don't know, um, so I'm guessing this is supposed to be Germany, zoom back in here, uh, but like in England, the Royal Force, like Sherwood Forest, which wasn't necessarily a dense group of trees, it was sort of a designated area of land, 
meaning that it isn't set up to be, you know, um, have any crops raised in it or um, other things, um, but forestry, cutting down trees for wood um, or the deer in it, they belong to the king because that was a royal forest uh, where a lord could have a forest and then the deer in that forest would belong to him. So even though it's sort of running wild, it doesn't mean it is not owned by um, somebody. Not yet catching up on our food, but... Okay, that construction is finished, so we're now at 4 out of 5, and we've got this, and sort of focusing all of our construction workers here. Could have up to 7. I presume everybody, because it's supposed to auto-assign um, applicable, I don't know if the women would work on construction, um, but they did work and not just um, do the daily grind of the food at home, but they would work as well. Uh, but this is sort of, you know, heavy muscle type jobs, uh, construction. Because hammering something all day takes a lot of muscle. Trust me, it takes more muscle than I've got to hammer. You know, you're hammering all day long, and it really builds up muscle. And I don't have that level of muscle built up. So, um, yeah, uh, unassigned constructing. So it's supposed to grab up all unassigned personnel and do it. So I would pre presume right now to rather have the three, three potential workers all working on this and then start another thing. And I'm going to, and as soon as we get done with that, I'm presuming because it has in the past, give me another set of tasks, like to um, build a um, Okay, she's carrying over blueberries. Good. Keeping us fed. We're now at 13 people. Um, nine men and four women. These are fancy houses to me, or a peasant's house. So the idea that they have wood planking as a floor. They've got a stone foundation, wood planking on the sides. Shingles, wooden shingles. They're, you know, they're sort of fancy to build, and I definitely know that they were, you know, things were done with that in the Middle Ages. But, um, combination of, and yes, we can see, like oh, I was talking about earlier, how this, this is sort of the chimney coming out here. Um, of smoke coming out from the, can we see inside this at all? No, oh, oh, yeah, oh, well, sort of. Mm, not really, okay. Um, so that might cause a bit of a draft, but, um, and I don't know if there would have been ways to shut that off, but this would be, give a lot of insulation, a lot more than just a thin plank of, a thin layer of wooden shingles. So even fairly well off homes may prefer to have a thatch roof over a wooden shingle type roof. Yeah, this is a fancy house. Interesting that where they sort of have the front connected that you walk through somebody else's and they didn't connect it to there. Okay, well, whatever. If it works, it works. 
This is literally my first time playing the game. Even though this is episode two, the game yet ha does not have a save game facility. Okay, so 25. So we continue to move in there and they continue to bring over more stuff. Good. Okay, so we do have women working in the either granary and or the um, forager's hut. I don't see a fire pit in that floor. And they would tend to do it as a, a pit kind of thing as opposed to anything that would stand up off the floor. That would what would stand up off the floor would be your um, stuff that you're you know cooking, you, you know either like a pot suspended over um, a fire to cook uh, it, or if they had metal, you know, um, pans of some sort. And I wanted to see how it did this irregular shape plot. I would have thought it would have oriented the entrance and exits there, but okay, whatever. Again, this is early days, demo, all that. Remember, everything I'm saying is just comments, not criticism. Yeah, we're continuing to build up our, our base of food, food consumed, yes. And the reason this is going down is not because we are settlement level increased, okay. New development point. Good. New message. Quest completed. New message. Well, I think we're going to take this opportunity to end this episode here. Um, let me pause this. Uh, I want to again thank you all um, who made it here. And yes, post your comments. What are you thinking about everything here? Um, to me, this looks really cool. And once you get into politics and military and other things yeah this can be a really good um sort of low level you know that you're worrying about details um strategy game and i i really love that idea so thank you so much see you next time for yes more strategy gaming historical gaming, all that type of stuff